My name is Eva Carmona. I'm one of the pulmonologists here at Mayo Clinic Rochester, Minnesota. Together with Dr. Carra and Dr. Rue, we have reviewed the subject of pulmonary sarcoidosis, diagnosis, and treatment. This article will be coming up in one of the Mayo Clinic uh, proceedings issues and reviews what the most primary care providers need to know about pulmonary sarcoidosis. We pulmonologists tend to see these patients, um, however, is the primary care provider who encounters them first when they present with non-specific symptoms such as cough, fatigue, dyspnea, but also as part of a routine evaluation. The etiology of sarcoidosis is unknown, uh, however, it's generally accepted that there is a trigger that in the genetically predisposed patients uh, uh, leads to the formation of non-necrotizing granulomas, which is the hallmark of this disease. The article describes in detail what is known about the pathophysiology of this disease. Most of the patients, they are going to have some sort of uh, intrathoracic involvement. This could be in the form of enlarged adenopathy, but also in the form of pulmonary infiltrates. Even though the majority of them have radiological findings, it's only about half of them that they're going to present with respiratory symptoms. 30 to 50 percent, they can also have extrapulmonary manifestations. There is um, a detailed table in the article that summarizes the most common presentations for each organ. Basically, any organ in the body can be involved with sarcoidosis. The most common one tends to be the skin. We also frequently see granulomas in the spleen and the liver. However, those don't tend to represent major problems for the patients. We do worry about other organs, for example, the eyes, the heart, and the central nervous system, because some of these uh, uh, granulomas can cause um, very um, severe symptoms and in the, in the case of the heart, even fatal arrhythmias. It's important then that we have a very detailed uh, clinical history looking for some of these extrapulmonary manifestations. The article reviews also the basic diagnostic evaluation for patients with suspected sarcoidosis, um, most common laboratory uh, abnormalities, radiographic findings, as well as the indications for bronchoscopy and tissue biopsy. Sarcoidosis doesn't have a gold standard test for diagnosis. Therefore, we rely on the clinical symptoms as well as the laboratory and radiological findings together with the tissue confirmation to make the right diagnosis. It's important also to rule out any mimics of this disease. And usually those are fungal infections, tuberculosis, um, atypical mycobacteria, but also malignancy. After the diagnosis is made, then we are led to whether or not the patient is going to need treatment. It's important to notice that up to 50% of these patients, they resolve on their own. So that means that even though we follow them, do not necessarily need to be treated. Those uh, indications for diagnosis, as well as the preferred agents, have been reviewed in this article. I think it's important to uh, uh, be comfortable uh, managing these patients. However, uh, we have reviewed the indications for referral to the specialist, in this case to the pulmonologist. Anytime the patient has significant symptoms and we think it needs to be treated, it's an indication for sending to the uh, pulmonologist. But also, anytime they have uh, multi-organ involvement, they have uh, progressive disease, they need a bronchoscopy, or the diagnosis is uncertain, we're always happy to see these patients in the interstitial lung disease clinic. Thank you. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org.
This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.